Hey everybody, it's Dave Isaacs coming to you from the Guitar Studio here in Nashville, Tennessee. And because it's Thanksgiving week, I was thinking about what song I wanted to do a lesson on today, and I want to look at one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs, the song Thank You. And now, basically what I'm going to show you is the primary riff and the chords, and keep in mind that as with many Led Zeppelin songs, what you're hearing on the recording is a composite of multiple guitar parts, and Jimmy Page was really a master at putting those pieces together. And that's really a topic for a whole other set of lessons in terms of taking these things apart. What I'm interested in is showing you how to play the song and put the basic things across with one acoustic guitar. So the main riff goes something like this, working off a D. I just love the way that sounds, I love the way it flows, and it's really not very difficult to play. It might look like there are unfamiliar chords in there, but they're just variations on things you do already know. First of all, straight up D chord. If I put down my pinky on the third fret of the first string, we have a D sus4, a D suspended fourth, and then it's just going to come back off, and then I'm going to lift my middle finger which is now another type of suspended chord, it's a D sus2, and keep in mind the numbers in those suspended chords, those sus chords, have to do with the tone of the scale that we're using instead of the note that would ordinarily be in the D chord. In this case, it's the F sharp, which is the third of the chord, a major third, and all suspended chords come from taking that third, whether it's major or minor, and moving it up to a fourth, meaning note 4 of the D scale, D, E, F sharp, G, or D sus 2 using note 2, in this case the E, D, E, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's where those numbers are coming from. In fact, pretty much any time you see a number in the name of a chord, that is what it's referring to. You look at the root note, you call that number 1, and simply count your way up the scale until you get to the number that's in the name of the chord. So a D sus4 is the D chord in which the 3 has been replaced with a 4. Sus chords, suspended chords, are special in that you do replace a note with another note. 3 moves up to 4 or down to 2. In most other cases, if you're talking about an add 9, if you're talking about a 6 or a 7, then you're simply adding notes. So that is the special case with suspended chords. So in any case, here's what happens. You could really think of this as just being a D chord with a melody part. And then notice how I'm approaching the right hand. Again, I'm approximating what you're hearing on the record because there's two parts there. There's a 12 string part and another part and so I'm putting the two of them together, really. But starting off, just hitting primarily the low notes of the D chord. And then... So that's strummed. Down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, down. And then, this is a very common figure, actually. Jimmy Page uses this a whole lot. You hear it in a bunch of Zeppelin songs. We're going to essentially a C sus2 chord by taking this D and then moving my middle finger to the C note here on the fifth string, third fret, and dropping my index. So far we have this. Now that would be C sus2 because we have a C note in the chord, that's the root, a G note is the fifth, and a D, which is your two because I'm actually not striking the E. In other words, I've replaced the E note, which would ordinarily be there, with a D. Now we are gonna hear that E note because we're gonna hear that same, that same melody figure, but against the C bass note. So technically speaking, this is a C sus2, this is like a C sus2 add sharp 11, but 
I'm not even sure how constructive it is to worry about giving it a name. We're really just working a variation on the C chord that involves the melodic figure we introduced on the D chord. Now this technically is a C add 9 because we have both the third of the chord, the E, and what would be the second, the D, except that it's sort of an oddity of chord classification that when we replace the third with the second, we call it a sus2. When we add that same second to the chord, and instead of replacing the E, I'm just adding the D to it, we call it a 9, because technically, if I work my way up the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, that D is the ninth note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so in terms of the way chords are classified, if the chord does have an E and a D, then it's a C add 9. Now some of you may know a C add 9 like this in which the E is played with the index finger here on the second fret of the D string, the D is played with the ring finger, third fret of the B string, and then we have this high G doubling the open third string. So this has E and D, therefore it's an add nine. This chord has the C bass, I'm muffling the D string, I have the open G, the fifth of the chord, I have the D, which is the second or the ninth, depending on how you decide to classify it, and that high E on the open E string. So look at the fingering here. I've got the C sus2 with finger two, finger three, finger four, fifth string, second string, and first string. My index is now free. This is the reason why I'm muffling the D string, because I need to get over here to the second fret. So what's gonna happen is, strike this, add the index finger to the second string of the first, sorry, add the index finger to the second fret of the first string, lift the pinky so we get, and then pick it up for the open E string. And so we have the same ba -da 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 that we had against D. G would be written as G slash B. It's a G chord with the B third in the bass. You do hear a little hammer on lick, so Jimmy Page hits open fifth string and then the index hammers the second fret, then striking the open D string. But I would keep this down so that we have this descending bass of D, C, B. And then we do exactly what we did with the C sus2 in that I'm using a free finger, which is now the middle finger, to hit this F sharp note, which technically in this case makes a G major 7 over B, but we're not going to go too deep down the rabbit hole with classifying these things. The idea is, again, we're just hearing this same figure that we heard on the D. C bass. from the open E string, so it's a 2-3 suspension. Put down the pinky for the sus4 with this syncopated rhythm. One E and a two E and a three. Or if you'd rather count it this way, one and two and three and four and one. Now, I would count this song like this. One, two, three, four. So the strums, the faster strums rather, are sixteenths. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four and and two and three E and a, four E and a, one. So. Again, I'm being somewhat 
general in the sense that some of the time I'm hitting strings in the middle of the chord, some of the time I'm not. It's textural, really. Again, this is more of a general approximation of what's going on in the recording, but it's something that will work for you putting it across. It's a very cool song, it's a very cool part, and it's a good example of how we can add movement to a chord and create a melody part while strumming at the same time. So here it is slowed down. One. some of those lighter strums on the middle strings. So the hand is moving. We can do things like this. We can have a full strum. We can have just a bass note. We can have the bass region where we're getting mostly low notes. And then we can have what I call a ghost strum where you're moving and you're brushing the strings very lightly. You could call it a brush as well and it just adds some rhythmic movement. So I'm adding in quite a bit of this. If I hit everything with the same amount of force, if I played all the strums full out, you would get something like this. in dynamics. It doesn't sound as good. So what we're doing is bringing out the melody notes and then filling in the space as needed with those light brushes or ghost strums. see that I tried to bring out or at least point out where those ghost drums happen. Now once the vocal enters, you're not hearing guitar, you're really just hearing organ, but you could certainly strum. I would just use open chords like this. If the sun refused to shine, D and C, and then your G over B, I would still be loving you. And back to the D. Suspended figure. When mountains crumble to the sea, filling in a little space, there would still be you and me. Notice that. Ba, 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 ba. Sus four, lift it up, sus two, and back. The release is B minor. Sing Robert Plant. At least 
I can't. My voice doesn't get up that high. But I wanted to show you the part. So again, the release, B minor, E, B minor, E, A, and then the bridge, C, G, D, C, G, D. So I'm going to play through basically intro, verse, release, bridge, and out like this. basic idea. Remember, this is not meant to be an exact transcription. The idea is to give you the basic idea of the song, introduce you to the techniques that Jimmy Page is using, and explore a little bit ways that we can add some melody to strum chords. It's one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs. It's lots of fun to play. It is very, very challenging to sing if you're going to hit those high notes like Robert Plant does, but you know what? He can't hit them anymore anyway, and he still puts it across just fine. So you can figure out a way to do it too. I hope you enjoy this one. The song is called Thank You. So thank you and happy Thanksgiving 2017. I'm Dave Isaacs. Thanks for watching.